This is a um, auto locking valve. Push down, turn the handle to release, so it's an emergency stop. And we're just going to take the rear spool out of it because it could be a little bit sticky. We just want to check the lubricant and seals stored on the shelf could get a little bit dry. So, 3 2 valve. We've got uh, air in, cylinder port out, and exhaust port. It shows the information on the actual back here. If we turn around, I can turn this around. There's a schematic. So, in the case of the spring, showing the spring end, so we've got the port blocked off, exhaust, and when the valve operates, it switches to the other end and get the airflow train going through. Three-way, normally closed, emergency stop. So what I'm going to do here is just remove the rear end cap. This is this part here. Just to check the spring action. Inside here we've got just the end cap and two screws and there's your spring center. It's a little return spring. Emergency stop, you can't use an air return because if the air goes off for some reason on the outlet side of it, you've still got to have this, this unit locked down. So it's just a plain pure spring return. There's a spool. If you push that like this, it'll then bring that out a little bit at the end. It stays out. What I'm doing is just putting the screwdriver down into that little spring end part. And just by twisting it a little bit, I can just pull this out like that. And there's the O-rings inside here. It's four O-rings. I'm just going to use some grease on here. This is pre-greased, but I'll show you again. And uh, smear it around with your fingers. Sometimes they, if they're stored, they can dry out. But it's good preventative maintenance to do this sort of thing. Take the valve again and um, push it back in. The actual way this unit operates is that the O-rings move across the ports like this to direct the air in, in through the three ports. It moves across that port there like that. And that's how the flow is directed between this centre bit, which moves that way, and the other, when it comes back, it moves to this side here. So it's directing the air from the centre here to the top port or to the center back down to the exhaust to the inlet port so the inlet port supplying both exhaust and cylinder so this is a maintenance for any spool valve maintenance for any spool valve they'll require lubrication from time to time especially running them dry all the time some some spool systems run with lubrication from lubricator but most systems run dry so they need to be pre-lubricated spring goes in here and then we just put, make sure that goes into the little end locator inside. There's a little locator in the middle of this. Spring needs to go into that locator. And push this back and screw it back in. Don't over tighten them, they just need to be nipped. And then we have the function. If you can see down through there, we can see the little spindle sticking out. When we push this in, the little white piece goes out and pushes the spindle in like that. If it goes right in, it locks off, and by twisting it, it releases and if we look down through the spool you can probably see 
maybe not so much that one, but you can certainly see in these ones, the seals moving, rotating backwards and forwards as the spools operated.